Come on, I need y'all to help me. Come on, I need y'all to help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you for whatever you're going to do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you another yes on tonight, God. We give you another yes, Lord. God, we thank you for being our everything. We thank you for being our all in all. We thank you for being alpha. We thank you for being omega. I can feel the presence of the Lord in this place on tonight. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. Do me a favor. Find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad to see you. You look good with your good looking self. Now do me a favor. Begin to clap your hands on that. I just want y'all to lose yourself in worship on tonight. Just forget about everything that happened prior to this moment and just lose yourself in worship.
whether he decides to grow somebody's arm back, whether he decides to restore somebody's vision. I asked God earlier to bring somebody in the house who had no faith at all, none. I asked God to bring somebody into the house who didn't even want to know him because they didn't know that they needed him. So if you were that person that came in tonight with zero faith, or zero interest in learning about our God, let me introduce you to him. He'll bring you out of some stuff. He'll save you. He'll cover you. He'll protect you. He'll keep your mind. He'll keep your children. He'll manage your finances if you're bad at money management. He'll find a way to make a dodging bullet hit and right in your direction to veer right off to the left and hit a blank wall. He'll find a way for an 18-wheeler that the brakes didn't use. They weren't stopping right just to swerve over to the other side so that they wouldn't hit you, so that you could find your way into the house of prayer. My brothers and my sisters, I know him to be the king of kings. My brothers and my sisters, I found him to be the lord of the lords. My brothers and my sisters, I found him to be Alpha and Omega. And just in case you don't know what Alpha and Omega means, that's the beginning and Omega is the end. That means while you're going through the valley of the shadow of death and you're not fearing any evil, well, he's comforting you while his rod is keeping you. That means he's going to cover you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. This is why I come into the house and give God worship. This is why I come into the house and say yes to the Lord because one day my yes to the Lord may keep me out of my grave. This is why my yes to the Lord may keep me up from my deathbed. This is why I say yes. This is why I say yes. This is why I say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes. Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. This is personal now, y'all. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes. Come on, begin to worship him right there. Come on. 
Come on and worship him. Come on. Worship him. Whoa. Come on and worship him. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Come on, worship him right there. I wish I had my voice. Good. Hey, what a wonderful time of day.
clap your hands all ye people come on clap your hands come on clap your hands and give God praise with your mouth come on worship him I'm a little vocally challenged but my worship is not affected come on hallelujah come on worship him lift your hands and worship him come on give him the fruit of your lips come on give him the fruit of your lips hallelujah 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 look at somebody on your right or left and say we're in the midst of a god time tonight find you another neighbor and say neighbor we're in the midst of a god time tonight tell him i really don't have time for testimony service tonight but i want to share with you one thing god done for me come on tell him i want to share one thing that God done for me. Don't worry about it. I've been screaming for four days straight. Come on, tell them one thing that God did for you. Come on. Woo! Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Woo! You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Listen. I know that it's kind of difficult to understand me at this point. And what some of you all must understand, I've been screaming since Sunday. And I haven't really had much time to rest my vocal cords. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to go to this side because I thought y'all would catch it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hey. you must understand is we've been under intense warfare since the revival began today I made it up in my mind that the devil would if he was gonna shoot this way he was gonna have to shoot from afar so when I got here today some of the saints were already here praying I said well, they, they caught it in the spirit I took my oil I hadn't had, I hadn't had my oil upstairs in my hand since I got here and um, I feel my voice coming back my anointing is tapping in me and hallelujah y'all better learn how to speak into some stuff y'all see that thing coming on back here it's gonna come in a second don't worry I'm not shot down behind you yeah. so so I got my oil and I begin to walk outside it's coming on in for real hallelujah I begin to walk outside and I start anointing the ground. I start anointing all over the land. And I said, God, if the devil going to shoot a shot tonight, he going to have to shoot it from afar. Then I came on back into the church and God started giving me instructions. He told me he want me to pass out some oil tonight. I said, all right, we're going to pass out some oil tonight. And he says, I want you to put out some um, prayer cloths. I said, all right, we're going to be old school tonight. And so then the saints began to pray even more. And then I told them, I said, everybody that walk in the door tonight, put some oil in their hands and tell them to anoint themselves. See, sometimes we be waiting on other people to anoint us. You better get anointed in this last day and time. You better get anointed yourself. You better encur look at somebody and say, encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Half the time my mama don't even answer the phone, but I got to encourage myself when nobody else is available. Look at somebody said, there's a Jesus on the inside of you. 
I'm gonna tell him, say, there's a Jesus on the inside of you. And greater is he. Hallelujah. And greater, he's greater on the inside of you. And I um I was reading a scripture not too long ago, and we're moving on. I was reading a scripture, and that scripture was saying, Jesus says. I'm going to the Father, but I'm going to pray to the Father that he sends you a comforter. And uh, I said, Jesus, why did you use the word comforter when he does so many other things? He says, because some people, they dwell on seeing me more than feeling me. He says, so because I didn't want them to suffer with, um, what is the word that he used that y'all like to use all of them? Um, um, when you are... I'm trying to remember the word. It's a word when you have separation anxiety. That's the word. And he says, I didn't want them to have separation anxiety. So what I did was I told them that I wanted God to send them a comforter so that they would not have separation anxiety. He said, because I didn't leave their life. I just left their eyes. That's why you have to walk by faith and not by sight. And tonight, God told me to tell you that tonight is going to be a faith walk tonight. Oh, weather church yet tonight. Um, it's going to be a faith walk. Whatever you need God to do, it's going to take your faith tonight. Anytime Jesus encountered somebody, the Bible says that he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Your son, your faith has made you whole. Tonight, God says, I need you to put your faith on the test tonight. And he says, when you put your faith on the test tonight, I'll heal you according to your level of faith. Oh, we're going to find the right church in just a second. Look at somebody and say, according to your faith. Find somebody else and say, according to your faith, God will make you whole tonight. And, and I'm expecting a miracle tonight. I know y'all, I know y'all trying to figure my voice out, but I said I'm expecting a miracle tonight. Hey! I'm expecting a miracle. Hey! Matter of fact, I need you to do a prophetic gesture. Jump about your seat, run to three people, say, I expect a miracle tonight. what's going on wrong in your life expect a miracle tonight look at somebody say expect a miracle tonight now I need you to clap your hands like the joy of the Lord is in your heart we take this time to welcome you to the ship church welcome to this experience on tonight it's going to be life changing on tonight it's going to be life changing tonight. Look at somebody and say, God is about to secure you tonight. Matter of fact, look at somebody and say, I'll see you in the future. hands on the entrance of our speaker on tonight so I um, this never happens to me something just happened to me and you don't even have to respond to it but I just my left ear just popped twice and God is restoring somebody's hearing <laughs> Thank you. 
is in the room tonight somebody's cancer just got canceled somebody's diabetes just got deactivated hey. lupus just left somebody's asthma just took a breath hey. Hey. so understand that God gonna do something tonight Restoration is coming to you tonight. Hallelujah. I told you that your asthma just took a breath. <laughs> your lupus just left. High blood pressure just came down. And low blood pressure just... Look at somebody say, it's already done. Expectation determines your experience. So if you expect God to ta 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 ta, if, yeah, if you expect Him to do it, God is going to do it. Because expectation is the breeding grounds for miracles. And look at somebody said miracles are all around you. Come on, say, I can smell a miracle. I can sense a miracle. And it's somewhere on my road. Say, the loudest person on my road gonna get the miracle.
sit down. So we can move forward, sit down. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to get everything God wants me to have tonight. I prophesy that before you touch that door again, that the manifestation to every prophecy that you've received up until now will meet you at your front door. Promotions are coming. Keys are coming. For I hear the sound of the abundance of keys. Look at somebody say, get ready for the release. I don't like the tone of your voice. Don't say it like me. Say, get ready for some keys. Telling you, get ready to receive all that God has for you. One more time, clap your hands if you love Jesus. God is so good. I said, God is so good. I said, God is so good. So everybody that came in here tonight, you put some oil in your hands and you anointed yourself. And when I asked God, I said, God, why did you tell me to do this? He says, because before the overflow on the table came, there was an anointing of the head. And if you've already anointed yourself with the oil, what you think is gonna happen next? Look at somebody and say, I've been set up for the overflow. You may need to trade seats with a good neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for the overflow. for the overflow. All right. Let's move forward. Welcome to the Shift Church um, where miracles manifest, healing happens. This is the Revival Hub and we're so excited about what God is about to do. One more time, clap your hands if you love Jesus. And while you're clapping, let's stand and honor Dr. Brian J. Mosley. Come on. Come on, let's do better than that. We honor him, we honor him and his anointing and we thank God for every visitor, every um, person in your respective places. We thank God for everybody, Lottie, Dottie, everybody. Look at somebody say, I thank God for you, you and you. Listen, let's put a ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Let's put a seed in our hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We haven't asked for a lot of money this week because um, it has not been about money. It's been about your miracle. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Tell them it ain't been, tell them it ain't been, tell somebody it ain't been about your money. It's about your miracle. Hallelujah. Remember, we've, um, every night we've just said, put a $20 seat in your hand. Just everybody put a $20 seat in your hand. If, um, we would like to give the ways of giving is cash to give, text to give, or cash app to give, or swipe to give. If you would like to give um, with your debit or credit card, you are able. Those of you that are on uh, Online Cathedral, welcome to Online Church. Hallelujah. We pray that this presence of God is reaching you in your house and your family. Giving is on your screen. When you're ready to give, um, pop up. Pull up and pop up. Hallelujah. So grateful for what God is doing. Hallelujah. 
Jesus breaks every fetter and he sets me free. And I believe freedom is in the room tonight. I'm telling you, free in every area. And I believe that in 2024, debt won't even exist in your life. Look at somebody said 2024. Debt won't exist in my life. We're sitting in the midst of people whose student loans just dried up. Somebody sitting in here right now, your credit score is about to accelerate. We got a few days into September, and at the Shift Church, we call it Supernatural September. And I prophesied that before September get here, you're going to get supernatural assistance. Now look at somebody and say, God is about to give me supernatural assistance. Somebody is getting healed. I can feel it down in my belly. I'm just waiting on a few of you all to get on up. It was James Brown that said, get on up now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. We thank God. Supernatural, supernatural assistance, supernatural acceleration. God's going to do something. I'm telling you, God is going to do something. I am telling you, God is going to do something. It won't be long now. Amos chapter 9. Look at somebody say, it won't be long now. So y'all waiting on me to holler, but God waiting on you to holler. Tell somebody it won't be long now. Put that seed in your right hand. Hallelujah. 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 It won't be long now. Put that seed in your right hand. I want to give God what's right and not what's left. Hallelujah. Did y'all anoint y'all self? You sure you did it real good? Watch God. I know it sounds like a stretch, but give God about 24 days. I heard him say 24. Give him 24 days. Some debt going to be canceled from where you moved from. That was on your credit and you thought you weren't going to move forward because of your credit. Yeah. Let me get out of that. I'm not prophesying tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody said 24 days. In Jesus' name. Let's say our given declaration say a seed of provision in God's house becomes a harvest of miracles in my house. Say this, say, I will never be broke. I will never be in debt. Miracles are hunting me down. Millions are hunting me down. God told me to say that it won't be long now before the millions fall in my bank account. It won't be long now before I get an alert from credit scores. In Jesus' name, listen, pass your seed to the nearest aisle. Hallelujah. I wish I could holler like I feel it tonight I wish I had my voice not so I could sing but I just want to holler because if you could see what I could see you will lose it right now because the angels of heaven are here tonight hallelujah the angels of heaven are here tonight hallelujah tonight is the last night of revival amen it's the finale, and I believe, um, I think uh, I, somebody needs to give an information, put it back on the screen. Hallelujah. Tonight is the last night of revival, but it's the beginning of something new in your life. And I'm so excited tonight because it's word time. Uh, We're going to start the service over. I said it's word time. 
it's my favorite part of service. And I thank God my mother is here tonight, Evangelist Leslie Wells. Come on, y'all clap for my mama. Hallelujah. She supported all week long, and she's been real excited about the revival. She talked about it every day all the way until the revival started. I said, Lord, I hope she talk about me like that. Hallelujah. I'm just joking, but she was so excited. And I can feel the troubling of the waters tonight. And I'm about to um, loose our prophet tonight. And he's going to do what God told him to do. Everybody stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, and, and what I want you to do, I really want you to set your expectations high. Like I told you, expectation is the breeding ground of miracles. If you expect that you will experience it, lift your hands all over the room. I said, Lord, I receive tonight. Come on, say, Lord, I receive tonight. All that you will have for me times 10 in Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands real good for none other than Dr. Brian J. Mosley. While you're standing, let's celebrate Apostle Heath. And find a couple of people that you don't know and just tell them I'm glad to see you here. Yeah, tell them I'm glad to see you. Father, we thank you for the word. Put wings on it. Movement in the message and power in the proclamation we ask in Jesus name that everyone say amen. amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord certainly we thank God and tonight culminates uh, this meeting with oil and sealing the prophecy whatever you received it's going to be sealed today and certainly God has had his way and I want you to lift your hands and just, just tell God how wonderful he is. Oh yeah, in your own way. Tell him how wonderful he is. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. I can feel him in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Numbers chapter 13, Numbers chapter 13, someone I would ask to read for me, uh, 33rd verse, Numbers chapter 13, hallelujah. We come this far by faith, mm -hmm. leaning on the Lord. Trusting in this holy word, he'll never fail me yet. Oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Come on, one more time. We come this far by faith. Let me hear you out there. Testimony. Well, tell somebody. Oh. 
never fail. He can't fail. He won't fail. It's not in him to fail. And because he does not fail, then your faith ought to be strong. How many of you can say the Lord has brought you from a long way? And the truth of the matter is he brought you all the way. All the way. Certainly he's good. Numbers 13. We uh, commenced with what was our first message? Let me see. See, a good evangelist wants to know if you've been listening. I've come from another generation. And if I did not do my job, if you can't remember what I spoke and what I preached, what was the first message? I want one person to tell me. What it, get the junk out of the junk. This is like life is full and cluttered and we got work to do. We've got to get the junk out, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. My brothers and sisters, if we're going to make it, it's got to start with what development, disciplines and all that. What was the second message? Why? Why? That was for the young folk. And some of us are young at heart and we're still trying to figure out why. What did I say about why? What was the takeaway? Find your why before your what? And before your who? Your why is your purpose. Why I'm here. And I'm here because, first of all, he created me. I didn't come here on my own. Huh? I didn't pop up. God said, 139, I've been what? Fearfully and reverently. Yeah, wonderful. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a wonderful person. Once you get to know me. Now everybody's not going to know you. Look at me. Everybody's not going to know you. And it's not for everybody to know you. But God knows us. He knows us. And uh, what else? That was it, wasn't it? Or is this, the, what, come on? Treading trouble. That was some message last night. Yeah, yeah. No, but the question was, or the statement was what? I, say it again. I say it again. I didn't, I didn't ask to be in this. How many? How many have that? <laughs> That's right. I, I listen. Listen to me. <laughs> I didn't ask. I just, for some reason, ended up in something that somebody else created, and then they want to blame me. Instead of them taking response, talk to me, parents. We want to blame everybody else, but that's your child. You brought the child in the world. And take the burden off of them. Take the pressure off of the boy or the girl. And let them live their life. Build that self-esteem and self-definition. Don't try to live your life through them. Because they got a purpose. God made it. You know, Lord, you made me. Did I? Say, did we go there the other night? That's an old storefront song. An old country. Uh, uh, one of them old songs. Up north we call it the ghetto songs. Lord, you made me. You know who I am. And Numbers 13, before I pray for everybody and those that are watching us. Um... And there was, and there we were. Somebody pick it up. Number 13 and 33. And there we saw the giants. Now listen, is that, is that your mama? Listen, that I want to hear her preach. I know she can. I'm going to slip in. I, 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 I'm going to slip in here. You got to send me a text and say, Mosley, if dad, if you're anywhere around, mom's going to preach. And we're going to have to come and sit in here because she sounds like she can roar. I love it. I love it. Clear and crystal. I love when people are using what God gave them. How many believe that God gave you something? 
And if you don't use what God has given you, oh, yeah, it just goes, oh, come on, somebody. But certainly God did. Go ahead and continue, please. The sons of Anak, mm -hmm. which come of the giants, mm -hmm. and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Now, my question here is, who told you that? And my subject is, get out of your way. Get out of your way. We always have from somebody, we want to get out of my way. No, get out of your way. Here, the question is, who told you that? In our own sight, we were as grasshoppers. And so uh, we were in, we'll continue that part too. And so we were in their sight. Lie. You just lied to yourself. What Bible is he reading? I'm reading the same one you have. But I am showing you what happens to us. You can't keep on lying to yourself. I preached the sermon not long ago. Tell me the truth. You know what? When I was a young cat and the, the girl I told I liked and the other one I told I loved, they cornered me. <laughs> and there was no technology, no internet, but for some reason they got together chewing bubble gum and eating uh, potato chips and drinking soda and my name came up. And when they saw me, I had to run. And my mother said, I told you, going to catch up with you. <laughs> Tell them the truth. You lied to yourself because you had no vision. Got to have vision. You lied to yourself. Now, I can deal with others lying to me, I guess, you know. But you lying to yourself. Who told you that you uh, look like grasshoppers. It's in your Bible. And, and, and so let me begin by suggesting there are three types of trauma. And one of the traumas is historical. Uh, that's tied to our past coming out of slavery. And it has long-term implications and affects, and we feel the whiplash. That's why God, I'm glad that God is a deliverer. This is what America, this is what we are dealing with is the trauma. It's the trauma on every level. That's why you can't tell nobody how they feel. It's quiet. Because you don't know what another person has gone through. And you don't know how they've been affected by what they have gone through. It's the trauma that they live with. We spoke about this the other night, uh, the previous service, how Hagar, had the angel not met her in the wilderness, she would have, what, continued to deal with the trauma from her experience. And, and so... Then there is what they call acute uh, trauma that happens immediately after an accident or you fall or something. And then there's finally the chronic, chronic that constantly comes up and you have to deal with it. And, uh, but I thank God for Romans 12 and 1. I believe it says something, I urge you, brethren, I beseech you, brethren, listen to, that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Your reasonable service. And, and, and be not conformed to this. Listen, listen to me because I want to help somebody. I want to help you because you're dealing with the jungle, the culture. You, God said, be in it, but not of it. And so uh, you're not going to, you're going to, you're on the job with manipulating managers and crafty co-workers 
and, and, and folk around the water cooler talking about you. I told somebody the other day, they talking about me. I said, but it's none of your business. And if you're talked about, you're thought about. And as long as they get your name straight, don't, oh, okay, I'm going to leave it alone. It's none of your business what people think about you. It's your business to know what God thinks about you. Look at somebody and tell them, God thinks a whole lot about me. And he said, in the scripture, he said, preacher, Jeremiah 29. He said, I'll tell you what I think about you. I know the thoughts that I have for you. I'm not going to bother that. They're, they're good thoughts. He loves me. You know what they, uh, years ago when I was a kid, this was popular when I used to play the piano around the church. Uh, Jesus loves me. This I know. Num, 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 num. For the Bible tells me so. Little one. They are weak, but he is strong. That, that's good right there. And then we would holler, yes, Jesus loves oh, me. Jesus. Oh, I'm singing. For what? That's the first thing you got to tell them kids. That's the first thing you got to tell yourself. That if nobody loves me, Jesus does. He loves me. Now, I don't want to get on that because I'll go to another text. And then my eyes get full of water. Because Jesus loves me. He loved me enough to give his life. And, 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 and they used to say, I don't know why he loved me. I don't know why he cares. My, 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 my. He's, I, when I see him, see, I don't want to do this in here now. When, when, when I see him, I want to ask him, why did you love me? Now, listen. Brothers, let me, all the brothers, lift your hands up. Okay, one, lift your hands up. Now, you know, don't, you know, the girl is going to say, she's going to say, why do you love me? Wait a minute. All of the other ladies. But you chose me. Brothers, let me help you with that. You can't answer that. Because you'll get in trouble. Because it's a setup. <laughs> come on, come on, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and then you go through all these changes trying to explain her, her why and all that. She's looking at you like this. Just forget it. <laughs> but how many know he loves me? <laughs> you see, he loved us and yet he knew me. He loved me, and yet he puts up with me. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I ain't going to mess with it. Oh, yeah, no one ever cared for you. He loves you whether you're locked up or you're free. I want the folk that are in facilities to know that Jesus loves them. That's right. He loves you. Gotta, if he loves you, and God has blessed you with parents that love you, then you ought to be lovable. Ooh, that's right. I'm almost finished. Tell somebody I'm lovable. Okay, I'm not always likable. <laughs> Come on, anybody here knows that. You, 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 I'm not always, God doesn't always like what I do. But his love is unconditional. 
You know how some folk are. They only love you when you're doing what, okay. See, see, that's why you have to know what agape, agape. You got to know what, uh, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Unconditional love. You know, a lot of people want to talk about love. They don't know what it is. That old girl that left out of here the other day talking about a secondary. Yeah, they don't know Tina Turner. They were too young. But she said, what love got to do with it? Love has a whole lot to do with it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I'm glad he left. Trauma, trauma, trauma. And it impacts our relationships. That's why I tell people in our life and in our perception, how we see the world, how we see individuals, uh, it affects how we relate, relate to one another. And it's important that we have to we address the trauma that's going on in our life so we can move on. Uh, God wants us uh, to move forward. That's what your church, your church is shift, right? And that, you have to live up to that. When God says shift, that's what you got to do. And some of us are dealing with the residue. We're dealing with stuff that we should have got addressed a long time ago. It's quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to, you got to get, ask God to help you with that. And you have to participate in that help. Listen, I'll tell you in a minute. Because, again, trauma uh, impacts our relationships, our life, and our perception, how we see. And so Canaan, everybody say Canaan. Canaan. Uh, on the other hand, represents my dream. I got Canaan on my mind. There's somebody here who got a dream. Some uh, objective that things are going to be better. Success and vision. Egypt represents the picture of my past. Wow. Woo! And all of your failures. I'm going to deal with that in a second. What happens then, preacher, when you're trying to reach a goal, but you're in bondage to the picture of your past? The text that we visit here, the land was given to them. The land was given to them by their father. A land flowing with milk and honey. We've heard this down through the years. And so when, when the assignment came to spy out the land, in verse 30, I believe that's where that said, is that there? Read it, somebody. Because you got two reports going on here. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. That's right, he calmed them down. Go ahead. And said, mm -hmm. let us go up at once. At once. And possess it at once. For we are well Wait able. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many folk in here heard what she said? Don't say it if you don't mean it. You're able. When God made you, he made you with the right hard way. You're built for it. You haven't exhausted all of your Yeah, you, you have it. You got it going on. You haven't tapped it, though, because you're so busy looking at somebody else in your peripheral. I wish I was. You are a millionaire in the making. Got to stop watching people. You got to start looking through that. that you, can't, you can't look back. What's that mirror that's right there? Yeah, that's the rare view. That's where some people get in trouble because they spend more time looking back. Come on, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. The Lord wants you to go forward. It's time for action. You waiting on... Uh, you're waiting on this administration. You're waiting on that congressman. You're waiting on some community activist. God said, I gave you what you need. I gave you an arsenal. 66 books. If the Bible said it, Genesis. What's the next one? Come on, talk to me. Leviticus, come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, 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 that's, you got, listen, a man said, get your kicks. 
on Route 66. You want your kicks? Get it in this. The word of God. You got God has tapped you. He's already revealed it to me. He's already tapped you for success. And you're complaining because you said to yourself, and we look like. Ask somebody, who told them that? That's right. You Listen, uh, uh, we are giant killers. I'm the only one that believes that. I said, I'm the only one that believes that. All right, well, then talk to me. I ain't talking about how short your skirt is. I'm not talking about heels and toes out. Cotton stockings. Wear your hair the way you want to wear it. I'm talking about life and living. I'm, this is soul food. Ham hocks is not soul food. Swine is not soul food. Come on, I can go to a, a, a cabbage, all that good stuff. That you, no, 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 this is soul food. And if you meet up with your opponent, you have to have, you, you, he said, it is written. That Jesus said to him, after he stopped talking, he said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that does what? It keeps coming out of his mouth. Oh, this is good stuff, isn't it? And, and just a spoonful makes the medicine. But we have, we have 10 that are saying we are grasshoppers. So you got a minority and a majority report. And, and, and we have, uh, uh, you do know that your past, now this is going to help somebody. You do know your past has nothing to do with your prophecy. No, I, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. What do you mean prophecy? Somebody was prophesied to, but your past keeps coming up. My Lord. My Lord. My God. You got to tell your past, get back. All right, all right. That's, that's, that is something that has happened in the past. Let it, look at your neighbor and say, let it stay in the past. Something you've experienced that you lived and how many of us lived through some stuff. But, but don't get it twisted. When God says move forward, you use the past for history. And you got to keep it in perspective. I told you the other day what we all were. People want to identify what they used to do and where they used to be and who they used to be with. All of us were what you going to call it. That's all you got to tell folk. What you, I used to be a what you call it. And get on with your life. God is in, tell three people, God is in control. God is in control. Yeah, he's in control of our, our laws and principles and all that. But God is not going to force our will. You surrender it. Lord, I'm, I'm moving in and I surrender it, yeah. my will. Because you know our wills are something else, isn't it? Yeah. Our will. I want to do it. And God says, I'm not going to violate it. When people are ready, they will come. You don't have to throw a lamp at somebody coming through your door that's your relative. I want you saved. You don't stop feeding the man that's paying the mortgage because he don't have good religion. You were the one that married him. And couldn't nobody tell you? Your grandmother couldn't tell you. He running all over Memphis. All over Oregon. And want to blame somebody. That was the one you said you fell in love with. And God said, wait! How can light and dark but he, no, but the brother now, listen, he's paying the rent. You know, I pastor the church, and the lady heard a preacher preach. I had to correct her. She said, I'm going home to put the devil out. I said, well, well, well you going to put the devil out? She said, yeah, I heard it, and I got convicted. I'm going to put him out of my house. I said, where are you going to do that for? You got to get the devil out of him. 
but you were a devil too when you got married. You have select memory. Pastor, I said, no, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, listen, you, got, you went to the justice of peace, got married, you weren't saved, he wasn't saved, you got saved, now it's time to get him saved. But it's taken so long. Well, God is merciful. God's got John Henry's name on his list. Well, what do I do? Keep feeding him. Keep don't deprive him of what belongs to him. I feel like talking to women now. Uh-oh, uh-oh. God, he, he, he told the man, he said, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself. Don't go, get that fan and go like that, sis. Come on, you're getting hot. God gave the man to the woman and told him to love her. And if you love her, you don't lift your hands to her. If you love her, okay, I'm not going to bother y'all. I'm in the wrong church. I need to be over there with my white counterparts because we got something wrong here. Love, love her. And, and, and if you love her, you'll say, anything you love, you're going to take care of. It's quiet in Zion. You love, you're going to protect. You love, you're going to pay the rent. You love, okay. That's why we don't know the difference between love and romance. Come on, somebody. They've got that. Because, okay, let, let me, I, I'm going to stay here. I don't want to be the love doctor now. But y'all going to push me because you ain't saying that. Do you love, you say, I, what, what do you mean? I fell in love. If you fall in, you can fall out. Yeah, 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 you say, yeah, okay. Uh, Jesus said, you say, you love me. Jesus told Peter, you love me, do what? Feed my, that's right, yeah, feed him. If you, uh, uh, okay, you do know that your, your past has nothing to do with your prophecy. And to be free from uh, and move forward, God has to do kabeshayobeshi. In our devotion, God has to be pursued. You, God has to be pursued every day. You gotta wake up. Don't grab your device. You wake up and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, you you home. You by yourself. You, you don't worry about Listerine now. Come on, don't worry about Clearasil now. Don't worry about Mac. Don't worry about Prada. Just look up and say, from whence cometh my help. All of 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 my help. You, you going to pay September's rent. You've been doing it. You're going to meet me before I get to the, uh-oh. I got utilities to pay. I ain't even asking you about that because you already know. We in this together. You, yeah, I, I, come on, somebody. even though I have a security system around my house, you watch over me. Yeah, though I walk through the valley, and the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. All right, don't behave yourself. Don't get like that. Oh, yeah, the story, this story, and I got to close, has relevance in today's world. These individuals were in bondage because, yes, you know, God said, I give you freedom. Whom the Son set free. You're free. You're free. Can't nobody stop you. And, and some of us don't even know what freedom is. And yet we're free, but we are obligated to God. Right, we, have, we, we, we are obligated because of his, he, we're constrained with love. I don't want to do this. I don't want to hurt God. Come on, I ain't talking about rules and regulations. I'm talking about the love you have for God. 
the love you have for God will make you bring that, bring that broom back where you stole it from. My God. Get broom. mad at me. That love that you have for God, bro, will make you pay them babies and put socks on and give that woman the money. So she don't take your name and bring it to where they go here in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, because she's on her way there. But you can beat her around the corner and say, here's the money, baby. Because, oh, when they get a hold of you, you're going to need this prophet, that apostle, that prophet, and that preacher. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad I'm free. You got to tell the devil you're free. I dare somebody get, get in here and holler, the devil is a liar. And now you are afraid of something that's bigger than you. Don't forget your forebearers and ancestors conquered Jim Crow and, and, and uh, slavery all the vestiges of slavery, but yet you're willing, watch this, to, you're willing to disrupt your faith flow. Wow. You gotta have a faith. This is the last three weeks God been telling me, stay in the flow. Stay in the flow. Stay in the flow. flow. He said flow. I said, okay, you're gonna have some interruptions, but I want you to flow. Yeah. Yeah. I want you, I, I'm gonna work this out for you. You gotta flow. Now I saw you going on like this, and the Lord said, he's in the flow. Yeah, you gotta get in the flow. Woman with the issue of blood kind of flow. She had a flow, but she had to get in the other flow. Uh, you gotta get in the wrong flow. You gotta get in the front, right flow. There's a money flow. There's a deliverance flow. Somebody here, you need to get in the flow. God's telling you to flow. Don't do let nobody distract you. You you getting into the to, to the real estate flow, you're gonna be the landlord. Listen, the same God that can give you rent can give you mortgage. But you got to tell your neighbor, I'm going to stay in the flow I'm in. And I'm not going to let no money. There's some people you can't call them in the morning because they have a whole lot of young people help me, a whole lot of bad energy. And you these young people talk about, don't bring that energy to me. Come on. And I believe them. Some people you just look at and say, oh, Lord, if I answer this, I'm going to be upset for the rest of the afternoon because you know what they're calling about. Come on. Listen. Let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Let God arise and your let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Let Almost finished. Now, continue the process so that you can have the manifestation of the promise. How many believe the report? But when it's time to act on the report, it's time to execute. All of the stuff from your past, preacher, comes up. Yes, Lord. Am I talking right? Yes, Lord. It, it comes up. Our state of mind suggests that this is too much for me to handle. Anybody been overwhelmed lately? Yeah. Here's the breakdown. Now, the devil, somebody said, is winning, and God is waiting. 
let me help somebody. Until you say, ah, uh, I've had enough of being a grasshopper. I've had enough. You got to, they showing you a $300,000 house and the devil's picking at you. You in the house, the realtor saying, let me step outside. While she's outside, you ought to tell all the grasshoppers to go out there with her. Because you done brought a grasshopper up in this million dollar house, in this apartment. I'm getting rid of grasshoppers today. You will never be a giant killer. You'll see a giant. Okay, I'm going mm. See, all 12 had faith. If you have your Bibles, you'll see. All of them had faith. All of them had faith. Two of them had faith faith in God and 10 had faith in the giants. Oh, they missed that one over their head. Okay, you see, two had faith in God. Some of us are married to grasshoppers. Some, okay, look, you get stuck like Chuck. Come on. Some of us raised, were raised by grasshoppers. Ask somebody, really? Ask somebody, really? You mean tell me? Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to leave it alone. We, we, we've got to stop teaching grasshopper mentality. We're producing grasshoppers. During slavery, one got plucked, ended up in the house. And upon getting in the house, you got indoctrinated. And in their mind, they thought they were better. That those in, they were better than those in the field. Let me show you what he did to you now. And the field, when they grow, got upset because the one in the house thought they were better. Guess what? Both got played. We getting played by the oppressor. But it's only when you buy into what he's saying. And it's going to take you get it out. You got to ask God to help you get it out your mind. His ice is the same ice, comes from the same flow. Well, I think I'll go over here and buy this butter here at this store. Uh-huh. They're blue eyes, you know, and blonde hair. So I'll buy it here. I'm safe. Well, this same butter over here with the man struggling trying to sell. Okay. Same one. Same one. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We shout and believe in somebody's ice. Is, okay, colder than. Mm -mm. Come on, same ice. Same ice. Yeah. So both got played because you were still slaves. Is a grasshopper. It's a grasshopper mentality. And the house, the house ain't Canaan. We think that Canaan is jumping over somebody to get a job and undermining people. Get it out of, come on, somebody. You got to get it out of your way. Get, we got to get, we got to deconstruct stuff. There was a group of people that God said they wouldn't. I am not letting them in. They were under Moses. Moses fooled around and lost his life. They had already decided a back to Egypt committee. They were going back to what was familiar. Hold on, somebody. God is wanting to do something in here right now. God wants to shift us. You can't, see, you know what? If poverty is a complex, you can have money and have a complex. You're stingy. You got, okay, stuff you don't even need, and people next door are hungry. It has, you have to be delivered. Tithing when you look at your Bible, God said, I own 
the whole thing. All I want you to do is participate in my business. Come on. And I'm going to bless you. It's, you have a covenant. I made an agreement with your fathers. I'm ending now. But before he can bestow the blessing, he has to touch the mind. Because you won't be able to stay in that house if your mind doesn't change. Your mind has to be delivered. You can obtain, but you got to maintain. Yeah. So you're driving around in a Maserati, but you still have a poverty complex. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. See? See, I'm talking about the mind, how the mind works. You got to, what is poor? Um, what is poor? Okay. Passing over opportunity. Repeatedly. Poor, that acronym, poor. I'm not poor. God said, I want to shake your mind up. By next week, you ought to have your down payment. By next week, you ought to have your promotion. But, but I've got to get you past, get out of your feelings. That's what God was talking. Get out of your feelings. Upset. What are you upset about? With the have and the have nots. You the one running around here talking about I got the guiding light that keeps you as the world turns. You got one life to live down here, huh? and you got to do that one day at a time. And if you're not careful, the doctor will get you, and you'll end up in Isaiah 53 and 5. God said, I provided El Shaddai. God knows what you're dealing with. We only got a hundred and some odd days left before 24. Get it together. I'm finished. You only, yes, you got, I, well, I ain't got all my work done. Get it together. First start on yourself. Because you can't go in the next calendar year. You mean to tell me you spent all this summer and did not fix it? I'm waiting on the Lord to handle it. No, God said I gave you power. Come on, somebody. You're snared by the what? It's coming out your mouth. Come on, somebody. Uh, listen, you got to get to the point where I'm tired of being a grasshopper. And, and, and um, uh, grasshoppers were credited, excuse me, created to help with vegetation, fertilization, all that on the ground. But listen, what are you saying about him? The only thing good about him, he's the ground. He stays on the ground. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to stay on the ground, that level. Lord, lift me up. Yeah, yeah. How many know he can lift you up? Well, I'm done. I'm done. I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. And, and I want you to understand you got work to do. Oh, yeah. You, gotta, you got work to do. Change your thinking. Yeah. And, and you got to have a vision for your life. You know? The guy got to the point where he said, I'm tired of bagging groceries. And so he decided that he was going to be manager. And then he got tired of being a manager. And then he ended up buying a store. But see, what people don't understand, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Think about that. So it's not just going to drop in your lap. You got something to do. You would not be in this building had it not been for the commander-in-chief. And then you catching the vision and running with it. See, that's what it's all about because yeah, I, I believe that we, we have a little bit of time left to do, redeem the time. God wants to clean up. He wants to stir up. He wants to save. And he wants to deliver. But he's got to equip us to do the job. And I've been talking about influence. God's going to give us influence. And I didn't say affluence. Influence. And we're going we're gonna to influence a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. And sin. Oh, yeah. Wave your hand, somebody. Oh, 
Oh yeah. And 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 it's gonna get it's gonna get greater later. Yeah. How many believe? I know, yeah. It's gonna get it's gonna get greater later. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna get better. Your situation is better. It's how you see it. It's how you see it. The lady said to me, and I've been in this world for 41 years and and I don't even have a boyfriend. I said, go ahead and keep talking. And I, and I, I was just, I wanted the Lord the Lord to bless me with somebody. Can can you you got a word for me? I said to her, I ain't gonna take your money. She said, What do you mean? I said, I want you to go and prepare yourself. But I didn't ask you. I want a, I want a good man. I said, There's plenty of them. But be specific with me. She said, well, I want a husband. Okay. When you want him? She said, right now. Okay. And then out of my mouth came, prepare me. Are you prepared to be a wife? Are you prepared to be a husband? I'm going back that way. That's where we started out that way. So I think what I'm going at is prepare me. Whatever blessing you want, you don't want it until he pre. Don't you start nothing. Prepare me. How many believe this is a, the place that we're in right now in our walk with God? Lord, prepare me. Prepare me. That's why. I'm, some hours we're fasting. Some hours we're praying. And, and God's preparing us. Prepare me, Lord, uh, because I'm going to this new job. And I don't want to fall out with nobody up in here. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare. I can't get it out. I can't, I, 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 Lord, prepare me. Somebody's getting ready to do a career shift. And, and they're saying, Lord, prepare me. Yeah, prepare me. Prepare me uh, to be a... Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. What else does it say? Pure. Yeah, yeah, and what else? What else? Uh huh, go ahead. What? Wait, what? You turn! A what? Mm -hmm. Prepare me, Lord. That's, the, that's what I hear God saying. Uh, prepare me. Prepare her. Prepare him. Prepare me, Lord. Prepare me, Lord. Prepare me. Prepare me, Lord. 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 Oh, prepare me, Lord. Prepare me, my child. Woo! Prepare me. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 Yes. Oh. Yes. Loose. 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 Never by shot. Loose. Loose. Come on out. Loose. Loose. The blood of Jesus. 
If if you if you yeah 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 if if you're sitting next to somebody just disagree with them help Lord 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 me 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 Lord I wanna be right. I want to be me, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me. Come on, this is the deliverance part. This is the deliverance part. This is the deliverance part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting ready to anoint everyone. God's got it. God's got it. We're going to seal the prophecy. Some of you don't even realize that you're just a praise away from stuff. Yeah, he said you're, you're, you're just a praise away from, from new space. Yeah, you're just a praise away from 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 some square feet. You, you need extra room. And, 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 and the Lord said, I'm about I'm about to bless you. So you you can facilitate everything that you need for ministry. I'm gonna give it to you. When you walked in, the Lord said, I'm blessing her ministry. And everything she needs, every square foot. It's already done. Yes, sir. Give you all of the facility that you need. Because watch what God does. God's got you on an assignment. Woo, no way. Hallelujah. He said, all that you need, I'm going to put in your house. Put in your... God said, I'm sending them from college and school and families. And you're just a praise of what... I want you to look down on your row and say, neighbor, somebody just a praise away from me. Oh, yeah. your, your, your zip code is, is about to change. Woo. Yeah, the land. Said I'm about to give you the land. Listen, I want you to, I want you to find a couple of people and tell them that God is about to do something. It's called enlarge my team. They're getting ready 
to sign the lease. And it has an option on it. I, you know what I need? I need two people to do an any day now dance. somebody and say, neighbor, I'm not going into detail, but in a few days, I'm going to sign some papers, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be free. tonight he's getting ready to supply you with more space and God says he's also unlocking you in the place of entrepreneurship now dance start dancing for it. It's not going to be as hard. God says, I'm getting ready to give you the grace to build. God says, you have a builder's anointing on you. And God says, he is getting ready to supply everything and everybody that you need to get to where you need to be. Now, if there's about four people who believe that, run down here and help her dance tonight for her.
And while he was speaking, the Lord said, the struggle is over. He said, the struggle is over. He said, just stop talking. I'm not going to say it anymore. Lord, I want this thing changed. And as you were speaking, God began to put the pieces together. And I'm, I'm not going to be in and out. It's going to be consistent. And I'm going to be able to deal with the distractions. I'm going to be able to deal with the conflict. Because I want to change completely. I know what I need to be doing. While I'm talking to her, the Lord's moving in health care. God's mo this is bigger than a CNA. God's doing something. I saw nurses' shoes and I saw uh, the whole garment. I'm going to shut up because I know what I'm saying. God said, you have to finish a course. I'm going to get that done. He's going to pay for the semester. Mm. Watch God. Hallelujah. I, I didn't come to prophesy. I came to seal the stuff. But I got caught up now in this situation here. But God said, I'm doing something. Hallelujah. Um, the grace that God has given you. The door. All the people that you need to know for this, it's, it's massive. And you'll be a debt-free ministry. Yeah. Everything will Glory! Watch God. He's sending help from the sanctuary. Those conversations you have with God in the morning. He said, I heard you. He said, I'm going to do something. Young man with the white shirt on. Stand next to her and start dancing. say it's already done. free you. Say yes, Lord. 
Everything. Come here. Everything. Lord says tonight that the stuff that's been a challenge before tonight, he says, I'm getting ready to start purging it out of you. I even begin to see you where you're going to begin to have these moments where stuff that stuff that you want to do, you can't do. And God says tonight that it's going to be the beginning 